Hello there folks, welcome to my channel. Thought I would make a video today after receiving a call from an old friend of mine asking me about uh, using SKM power tools for Windows. Uh, so the easiest way I thought to demonstrate that would just be to do a little project, uh, an old project that I did a few years ago um, on a small 400 amp 208 volt service and just plug along through it and you can follow along maybe you might learn something. It's quite possible that I will make a few mistakes here and there because this is just a single take go uh, recording. So I apologize and I'll do my best to try to make any corrections in the comments if I do say something that's incorrect. Uh, feel free to contact me at brand at bomberengineering.com also or give me a call sometime if you need someone to help you on your project doing some uh, data entry for you or even some studies um, available for that type of work too. In any case, let's get started here. The project we're going to be looking at is a little fab shop. It uh, has a 150 kVA oil filled pad mounted transformer with a disconnect switch is mounted to the side of it and then also the actual service or in this case it's really a feeder um, for the customer that this was for and it was a feeder considered a feeder not a service but anyway underground conduit over to a CT cabinet uh, inside the CT cabinet on the secondary or load side of the CTs it had split out one set uh, of feeders to MDP and then another to this fuse disconnect switch over here the main distribution panel had a 400 amp GE main circuit breaker in it and then some feeder breakers going to this panel which was called square D panel and panel LP and then also over to this bus duct. The disc, fusible disconnect for the shop panel went over here to a non-fuse disconnect to the shop to the panel actually called shop panel. You can see over here in my field notes I drew part of the one line over here and then the rest over over here. There were primary side fuses, bayonet style fuses in the uh, tank um, of the pad mounted transformer 150 kVA 3.3 percent impedance that's the fuse number they were 25 amp fuses transformer was a uh, 12470 to 208 volt secondary I obtained the short circuit um, available short circuit information and the X over R ratio information from the customer. From the pad mount, you can see it goes to the CT cabinet where it split off one feeder set of uh, four routes to the MDP and then it's, that was a pair, two sets of four routes rather in parallel and then one single set of three outs over to the fuse disconnect from the fuse disconnect to the non-fuse disconnect then from the non-fuse disconnect to the actual shop panel. We're going to go from MDP over here, jump over here, where I had a little more room to take these notes. There's the aforementioned GE breaker. It's a 22K rated breaker, 400 amp bus. I wrote down here it was a 10K panel board because it has some circuit breakers in it rated only 10,000 uh, amps. These the, here are the three breakers that I mentioned before, the, the panels of the feeder breakers, panel LP, the bus duct feeder, and the square D panel. And they were, it looks like they were GE, TQD, TQD, and THQB. And the feeder conductors there to the panels, LP, the bus duct, and the square D panel. Let's take a look at a few photographs, what I'm talking about here. That happens to be a close-up of, yeah, let's see if we'll start back here, okay. These aren't in any particular order, I apologize for that. Um, here's a uh, look inside the CT cabinet. You can see this is from the pad mount on the line side of the CTs, the load side of the CTs, the parallel set of four outs going to MDP, and then the loan set of three aughts that look like they must have been added later to that fuse disconnect switch. It's a, that looked like, what was that, a T, yeah, there's one of the THQB breakers. 
Uh, this is inside the pad mounted transformer. You can see it's a 25 amp fuse. It's Cooper RTE. Here is the uh, fuse series number. This is the primary compartment. It looks like we've got uh, 200 amp elbows with capacity of test points. On this side, with feed through primary bushings, on the other set of bushings, we've got some lightning arresters. Uh, I'm not going to bother with putting those lightning arresters in the model. In fact, I'm not even going to bother putting this cable on to show the utility information on the primary side of the transformer when we get to the SKM model. Transformer nameplate, as I showed you on my field notes, is a 150 kVA transformer pad mount. 1247 uh, primary, 208Y, 122V secondary, and 3.3% impedance. This is the secondary side. Uh, this is that set of 500s. You got the neutral and XABO. Looks like it's bonded to the case. And black, red, blue, A, B, and C. Um, 500s go into the CT cabinet. And then this is that other tap over to the disconnect switch that's mounted. Um, on the side of the pad mount. Okay, that gives you a pretty good background of what we're dealing with. Now let's draw this. I've already started this project and saved it as Fab Shop, but I've not input any elements into the project yet. Um, pull out my cheat sheet here that you cannot see, uh, rather than keep referring back and forth to my field notes. First thing you're going to do is start with the utility. We said that uh, we had the actual available fault current on this 9033 phase and it was what 8402, 8402 line to ground and then a 3.3 and a 3.28 if I remember correctly from the X over R ratios. Got that. The voltage per unit, the base rated MVA, base rated voltage 12470. And that looks like it's complete for our utility. Now let's add our pad mounted transformer. Pad mounted transformer is 150 kVA, full load kVA 150. It's a delta Y, 12470. Bus voids on the primary. 12470Z, this is primary, this is secondary. 208 volt secondary. 208 volt secondary. I need to add the transform impedance, transformer impedance. I'm going to do this way 3.3% impedance. And use the typical X over R ratio for that. This transformer, I'm going to call it pad mount. And I, I already realized a mistake. I did not put the primary side fuses in. So I'm going to disconnect this, add the primary side pad mount fuse there and connect it to the transformer. There we go. I like to uh, calculate my primary and secondary sides of the pad mount, so I'm going to turn that bus there from a node bus into an actual bus and call it pad mount primary. This is going to be pad mount primary fuses.
you can draw your whole one line or input the data as you go. We'll do examples of both. This is a high voltage fuse. It was a Cooper RTE 353 series. Three fifty three C ten, I think it was twenty five amp. Okay. The other thing I like to uh, see what I'm doing here when I'm doing entering the data. So I want to turn some of my data blocks on so I can see what's happening there. Okay. Bad mount primary side bus, primary side fuses, 353 C10s, 25 amp rated, 150 kVA, pad mount 3.3% impedance. Okay, looking okay so far. Got a pad mount secondary bus because I want to know what the incident energy is at the pad mount. Software was smart enough to realize that's 208 volt. It figured it out from the uh, transformer data. Okay. Now, if you remember from the photographs, we had a couple of cables, uh, a couple different taps off that transformer secondary. So I'm going to add a new cable here that's going to go to the disconnect switch. That disconnect is for whatever reason, nothing was wired to it. I don't really care um, right now, all the particulars about that. So I'm just gonna show that disconnect switch as a bus, maybe. There we go. Disconnect at pad mount. Number twos. Uh, what do we want to select here? I usually uh, go to the NEC table 31016, whether or not it's in magnetic or non magnetic conduit. It's, I could even maybe call that in air, but I'm going to say it's magnetic with a ground. There definitely was a ground wire there. It did have a little chase nibble on it for. for Speed, I'm going to say it was a uh, in conduit and it was number twos and it was at most five feet long. There we go. It software knew it had a NEC opacity of at 75 degrees C column 115 amps. Okay. Now the feed to the uh, CT cabinet. I need a cable for it as well. And I, I could copy this data over. In fact, let's just do that. Paste the data into that. Except for I had in my notes this was in PVC. Um, and PVC is not magnetic, so I need to change to non-magnetic THWN for four single conductors plus a gram, as I definitely saw the uh, neutral and black, red, blue plus the ground wire in that conduit. So we'll select that. non-magnetic and it was a set of 500s and I had it as a length of 15 feet from the pad mount over to the CT cabinet. All right, let's add our bus for the CT cabinet.
CT cabinet also had a couple of tabs off that, so I need to make some room for it. And I had a couple of cables off of the CT cab. If you remember, one went to that fuse disconnect in, inside, and the other went to uh, the main panel board MDP. So I'll need a couple of cables there. Now, these I had in my notes, they were uh, in metal, so I'm going to copy this data and paste it into these two cables. The tap that went to the shop panel fuse disconnect was a set of three aughts. I had it down as 14 feet. And then the one that went to MDP was parallel four aughts eight feet. Okay. Now then, this is going to the shop panel disconnect. This is going to MDP. I want to know what the incident energy is at the line side of that disconnect. Now, I can use a special device. I can use a new switch for that. Um, or I can put a bus in there. I think it's easier for me to put a bus in, so that's what I'm going to do for this one. They are, there's different times and different reasons why you want to use some of these other things and use library data, but I'm going to use a bus for it at the moment. Um, I'm going to call this shop fuse disconnect line side. And then I'm going to add a fuse in there so I can put input my fuses. But I don't like that symbol because I do want to show it as a fusible disconnect switch. So I'm going to change the symbol for it. And I need to pick out the fuse. I think it was a Busman FRN, if I remember correctly. Where am I going here? FRNR. It was a 175, according to my notes. There we go. Now, you might, if you want to put a load side um, bus in here, but you're going to have to add some resistance to it because it won't like having two buses in a fuse right after one another. I, I am certain that my incident energy is going to be much lower on the load side of a fuse than on the line side of it when I don't have any protection up to that point. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a cable. That cable was a set of three aughts. Magnetic conductor on the ground. It was 35 feet from there over to the shop panel non fuse disconnect. Um, let's go ahead and throw that in there. And then we'll have another cable. And then finally our shop panel. So the shop 
panel non fuse disconnect switch. And for whatever reason, they changed sizes here. Um, it went from three aughts to four aughts. They must have had some four aught laying around and ran out of three aught or something. And it was only five feet. The shot panel. What was that? That was a 225 amp panel, um, 10K. I'm looking at the library here, 225 amp panel, 240 volt, 10K rated. So that's what I'm selecting for that shot panel. And it picked it up here. What am I missing? I didn't give this any data for this disconnect switch. Fuse disconnects. I want to say this is a heavy duty disconnect switch. 240 volt. Bring it right 30 to 1200 amp. There we go. It's 200 amp, 240 volt rated. Okay. Getting closer. Let's go back up here to our model. We did put the two sets of four aughts into the MDP. The MDP had a um, main circuit breaker in it. I'm going to call this MDP main circuit breaker. And then the MDP itself. I was hoping to get this video done in less than 30 minutes, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Skinny up our diagram here. The MDP we said was a GE thermomagnetic breaker, not static trip thermomag. TJD, I believe. amp, 400 amp trip, there is no replaceable plug. 400 amp, that's a 22K rated breaker. Now then, we have uh, feeder breakers coming out of this. For panel LP, the bus duct, and the square D panel. this MDP-LP for this breaker. This will be MDP-bus duct. And this will be MDP-square D. Okay. I'm pasting the date even though they're wrong, but it'll help me find these in the library a little quicker. The uh, LP panel was a TQD. Two hundred and twenty-five amp. Okay. And that one was the same for the bus duct 10k rated breakers the uh, 100 amp breaker over here was a GETHQD so I need to find that one THQD 
it was 100 amp, I've already got it there selected. THQD 100 amp. Getting close, folks. More cables. That's, um, yeah. I was going to show you cloning, but I'm just going to stick with this because that'll be a lesson for another day. This is all metal conduit for wiring the ground. So I'm going to copy that over there. This happened to be four aughts and six feet. About 35. Let me get it. Yep. The bus duck was a 50 feet and four aughts. And the square D panel was size two. Now we got number two copper, and it was 15 feet. And three more buses. There, I'm going to move them down a little bit. This would be panel LP. This is the bus duct. And this was square D panel. Okay, LP was a 225 amp. Panel board, main lug only. Ten K. Bus duck. Uh, I'm just gonna, in the interest of time, I'm gonna just say it's a panel. Also, I'd have to do quite a bit more work on that one to really get it totally accurate. But I'm just giving you the. Overview of the software right now, the square D panel, it was a 100 amper, 240 volt, 10K, rated. All right, that is my model. With any good fortune, I won't have any errors when I run this short circuit analysis. So short circuits this little guy over here. I'm going to choose comprehensive. I went three phase, single line to ground faults, all buses. These aren't going to matter. I'll leave them checked, but they're not going to really matter uh, for what we're doing here for running the short circuit analysis. So let's run it. Looky there, no errors and no warnings. So what did we end up with here? Right at the pad, pad mounted secondary. Um, the secondary of the pad mount, I should say, about 12,000 amps available. CT cabinet is about 11.5, it looks like, three phase. The shop fuse disconnect line side, um, about 10,000 amps. I did not put a rating in there for that, but I know it's a uh, at least 100,000. It's a 200 amp. So let's do that. 100,000. At my MDP panel, I've got 11,000 amps available, but I've only got 10K rated feeder breakers in there. That may be a problem. And panel LP, it looks like I've got over 10,000 amps. That's also probably a problem. I did not put ratings in for these buses. Uh, pad mount, secondary of the pad mount, I'm going to also say it's 100K. I didn't do the math on that, but let's see. Let 
Okay. I want to see if I'm over dutied anywhere. So in order to do that, I'm mentioning this specifically for the conversation I had earlier today with my old friend. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say his name here and embarrass him. We'll do the equipment evaluation and see where we're failing. We ran this comprehensive. Um, these are the protective devices. It looks like I've got some failures here, as I suspected. The device is rated only 10K, but I've got uh, over 10K. This is with the X over R ratios figured in. I'm 130% over on these breakers. Um, that one passed. It's far enough away out there in the shop that the fault current was lower. And it looks like I failed on my pad mount. Those are always going to fail. I don't know why that is with the, with the rating in there, but we can talk about that some other time. What about on the buses? CT cabinet and disconnected pad mount. I did not enter any ratings on that. Panel LP failed. MDP unknown. Pad mount primary unknown. Shop panel pass. Square D was marginal. I must have forgotten to in my MDP, yes I did. I forgot to give this a rating. It's a 400 amp panel board. And it's defaulting to 10K. I can change that, but I've got 10K rated breakers in it. What are we going to do about these failures? Well, I'm going to look. The first thing I do when I have failures, I'm going to look and see if there's a series rating for the main breaker and these branch breakers, the THQDs and the, T, the TQDs and the THQD. And since I prepared ahead of time and I look back on my file on this job, I know that there is a, there are some series ratings. So let's check that out. This is a data sheet uh, from GE. You now all the manufacturers have similar published data where they've actually tested these combinations in series. So if you've got you look at the the rules on how to do this. If you've got the TJD, which we do have a 400 amp TJD three pole in series with a THQB, it's good for 22k. Now this doesn't say THQB. I wrote THQB in there, but we'll get to that in a second. The other one was the TJ, TJD in series with the THQB is equal to THQ. QL and the TQD, and this is for the 100 amp and up to 225 amp. Those are good for a series rating of 22,000. Why did I think my THQB was equal to a THQL? Because here, substitutions, it says the THQL is equal to the THQB. So when you're doing these series ratings, it gives you permission to do that. What does that mean for my one line? All these ones that failed, like panel L LP here, I can just manually input, I have a series rating of 22K from that one. Bus duct unknown, square D panels, and square D, there's no series combinations listed um, for that. Actually, I got it jumped ahead a little bit here. I may have a problem with this LP panel. I shouldn't have done that. Probably not my first mistake. Uh, this is, these are the ones that I wanted to do a series ready on. device. I know I have that in there. Here it is. 22K. Just overlooking that. 22K. Twenty two K. I'm gonna say my CT cabinet is good for four hundred amps and a hundred K. 
right, now let's rerun our equipment. Series running, I'm still failing on my buses. My overcurrents, they passed because I bumped the series rating up to 22K, but I forgot to do that on this panel. So. Yeah, I didn't need to run it again, but oh well. Equipment evaluation. I'm getting closer. I knew that was going to fail. LP may still fail. I'd have to do a little more research into that one to see uh, if there's anything I can do about it. One trick you could possibly do to get this down if you couldn't find a series ready and you didn't want to spend the money on replacing the panel, you might be able to artificially increase the conductor length, the feeder length on it. So let's uh, say we're going to coil up 30 feet of cable there. Let's see what that does to it. Did that get it? Yeah, it changed it to 30. That got us down on the three phase under our 10K. That might pass, it might not, depending on the, what the X over R does to us. LP still failing, but it's a just, a, just barely failing. So we'll change this one to 40 feet. Again, you may or may not even want to do that. You might think this is foolish to, or to go back and just put a bunch of extra wire in there just to get this rating down. You might want to um, replace the panel or put higher rated breakers. Just replace all the breakers in this panel out. Let's just, I'm just curious to see what it will do to it. And I think we're probably within that margin now. Eh, marginal. But it's close. Anyhow. It's enough time on that spent on that. Let's run an arc flash analysis. Arc flash is this little button here. Got multiple choices of how you want to run this. I've got a the latest version of SKM downloaded now, so I'm going to choose the latest release of IEEE 1584. Uh, comprehensive fault report calculated values from equations or we can use this less than 2000 amp exception um, our fault currents are high enough here i don't think that that 2000 amp exception is going to do anything for us even at the uh, arcing current so i'm just going to leave it as calcu calculated values excuse me i'm going to use the two second cutoff uh, if we have a fault that won't clear within two seconds, um, the thinking there is a person will either be blown away from the fault or they can get away from the fault in two seconds time. So it cuts it off there in report options. Um, I'm just going to run the bus for this report, although I do often run it with uh, bus and protective device line side and bus and line and load side also or bus and protective device load side you might depending on what you're doing you could use any or all of these at different times here we go report summary um, it gives you what your bolted current is your arcing fault current bus data that what all your buses are what your in calculated incident energies are you see you've got this column here um, for the this is new for the latest release of IEEE 1584 we can change this from vertical bus bars in a, in a box or vertical in a barrier or horizontal in a barrier um, you can input that here or input it with the data in one of the panels or the CT cabinet or whatever you can also change the box dimensions and the bus gap here or you can do it in the one line diagram when you look at the component editor you can also choose what you want uh, how you want to color code your labeling and your one line I'm going to just for 
And then I'm going to make that green. Close that. And if I want to do labels, there's all kinds of labels that you can watch other videos, or maybe I'll do another video just on labeling them. What you what all your options are there, but there are a ton of them that are default, and then you can customize them depending on what kind of label printer that you have and what you want it to look like, or you can put your put your own company logo or whatever in the label function. Now then, what else did I not touch on? Say CT cam. Now I want to configure this myself. Well, I can choose these configurations in the CT cabinet. That cabinet was a lot larger than uh, what these dimensions were, so I can choose to edit those here if I like, or the uh, bus bar gap. I can change it. That's up to you. Um, oh, color. I wanted to demonstrate uh, changing the color or sh showing the color of the changing the color on the one line to see per your arc flash. If I had, depending on what category I had of, of the incident energy level, I could color code these. This looks like they're all in uh, that orange, but of course they were all orange on that PPE table. But I'm getting to where this video is getting longer than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to sign off. I think that's a decent overview for you to watch there, buddy. And hopefully you find it helpful.